Welcome back to the special edition of Insight from The Hague. And we are talking to Ahmed Azumchu, the man in charge of the OPCW and in charge of ridding the world of dangerous chemical weapons. Worldwide, after the fall of Nazi Germany, the Russians, the Americans, took huge chemical weapon stockpiles back to their countries. And they were the two biggest players in terms of chemical weapons. Um, where are we now in terms of destroying those stockpiles? You mentioned that Russia is very far along and they did so with international assistance. Where is America? Um, there, are, there have been eight countries uh, which have become members to the organization and declared chemical weapons. And um, uh, apart from Iraq, which has some limited stocks uh, dating back to the Saddam regime and uh, which are now uh, stored in uh, two bunkers, uh, all others have destroyed their chemical weapons except the United States and Russia, uh, which had the largest stocks. In um, uh, the Russian Federation, there were stocks of uh, close to 40,000 metric tons. In the United States, close to 30,000 metric tons. And these two countries have been destroying their stockpiles for the past 20 years under the verification of our inspectors. So in each facility, we have a permanent presence of our inspectors to ensure that the uh, these two countries are um, uh, destroying their declared uh, weapons in an uh, environmentally and uh, humanly safe environment uh, or through uh, such methods and procedures. Uh, and the United States uh, so far destroyed 90% of their chemical weapons and because of some um, uh, disagreement with the local uh, populations. They couldn't use uh, the same methods so we expect the United States to complete its destruction uh, by the year of 2023. Let me ask you about North Korea. Lots of attention on their nuclear program, but you know very well that they are allegedly holding very big stockpiles of chemical weapons. You were actually along the demilitarized zone uh, in September, as I understand. What's your concern there? Uh, North Korea is one of the uh, four countries which are not yet party to the convention. And uh, while we have been uh, making some demarches with those uh, four countries, including North Korea, uh, unfortunately, this is the only country which never responded to our demarches, requests for meetings, consultations, and so on. And uh, uh, looking at the open sources, North Korea is suspected of having a large chemical weapons program. Uh, about 3,000 metric tons of uh, ch chemical weapons of different kinds, uh, including nerve agents, and uh, probably um, some of them uh, are weaponized, uh, filled in munitions or missiles. And uh, this is a major concern, of course, uh, to South Korea, uh, uh, and, uh, but also to the international community at large. During my visit uh, to the demilitarized zone, um, I realized that uh, the continued existence of such weapons in North Korea uh, is a major source of uh, uh, potential instability uh, in this part of the world. And if such weapons are used eventually, uh, this would create uh, devastating uh, consequences. Libya, they cooperated. You were able to remove chemical weapon stockpiles. Was it as easy as the media flashed it out to be, or were there a few tense moments when I understand those containers were taken down to the port and Daesh was very close by. Can you tell me about that? Uh, Libya uh, joined the convention in 2004 during the Qaddafi regime uh, and uh, the preparations uh, were undertaken for the destruction of existing stockpiles of uh, chemical weapons in Libya. Many uh, of them were already destroyed, but there were remaining uh, uh, 500 tons of uh, category two chemical weapons, which are precursors, but which are still toxic and when they are mixed uh, they may be used for the production of more sophisticated chemical weapons. So this was a concern and uh, uh, because of the increasing threat in this country of Daesh, uh, we, uh, upon the Libyan uh, government's request, uh, the state parties decided to remove uh, those uh, substances outside of the country with a view to destroying them elsewhere. Uh, the major challenge was to transport them uh, from uh, the, the place where we, they were, 600 kilometers away from uh, Tripoli, to the north, to the port. To, through an area of conflict? Absolutely, very close to the uh, areas controlled by, by Daesh. And they were able to bring all this stuff to, uh, to Misrata port, and where a um, uh, Danish cargo ship uh, was ready to embark them upon. 
Uh, I think uh, the uh, contributions of more than 10 state parties, uh, primarily Denmark, which took, uh, of course, a risk, uh, but also others uh, did facilitate uh, the success of this uh, mission. Can you reveal now that it was more dangerous than perhaps anybody knew because Daesh was around the port, is that right? The whole transportation mission was um, uh, kept very low key. Uh, we had the trackers on the, um, you know, uh, on the tracks, uh, so which we could uh, follow here at the OPCW through a satellite uh, where, where they were moving, when they stopped and whether uh, they were close to the uh, conflict areas. Uh, and based on the information we uh, actually received from the United Nations and others, we were able to know uh, where uh, ISIS had more control. So we, they avoided this, uh, in fact, this road. They took another road. And I think uh, we were able to uh, mitigate the risks, security risks. They were close but didn't know you were there? No. Last question to you. What does the future hold, do you think, in terms of chemical weapons? Are we winning or are these now in this information era becoming more and more dangerously accessible and people can make them in garages? Is the concern just growing on your part? I, I think uh, the implementation of this convention uh, has been very successful in terms of uh, destroying the existing stockpiles. Uh, the challenge uh, still is uh, to, to prevent uh, its re-emergence. Of course, we have verification mechanisms in place. Uh, our inspectors are going to different uh, chemical industrial plants uh, to verify that those plants uh, do not undertake some uh, prohibited activities. Uh, we want to prevent the diversion of uh, dual-use chemical material for the production of uh, chemical weapons anywhere in the, uh, in the, in the world. Uh, having said that, uh, we, uh, I think uh, the uh, state parties will have to make additional efforts uh, to put uh, some measures in place to have the necessary legislation, first of all, uh, but also uh, implement some additional measures to prevent access to dual-use chemical materials uh, for possible use in the hands of terrorists uh, and um, other extremists, organized crime and so on. I think uh, the uh, possible use of chemical production and use of chemical weapons by uh, non-state actors will remain on the top of our agenda in the coming years. And uh, I, I believe that uh, this organization can do more. Director General Zimchu, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. The threat of chemical weapons isn't about to disappear soon, but if there is any consolation, the Director General of the OPCW says, never before have more nations been determined to combat the threat. I'm Dana Lewis, and that was Insight.